distribution of today's talk, namely the so-called Poisson distribution. Here is a situation, an example we'll use. The Poisson distribution is the one we use that's also related to my example of counting uh, bacterial colonies in a petri dish. This is a model for a system where we count something, uh, typically during a time period or over a sort of a, for instance, a 2D space and you count bacteria colonies in the 2D space or you count fish in the sea over a 2D space or you, you count customers to a certain website or you count patients on a certain clinic that we are looking at. In this case, a small clinic that has uh, registering people that are put into hospital due to air pollution. That is an average, not so many luckily, uh, 0.3 per day. So this is something that happens over time. And we may be interested, the, the random variable that we're interested in is the number of patients, patients like those defined here, I don't write all the words now, um, I should say, in one day. To be explicit about the time period I'm talking about. Number of patients in a day, that's the random variable. Maybe uh, if you look at data, one day it's zero, another day it's one, another day it's zero, the third day it's two, the fourth day it's whoa, three, a high number compared to the intensity that we are, we are told that the intensity is pretty low here, only uh, 0.3 patients per day, that is uh, one patient per 3.3 .3 day. Uh, then, having this model for this system, we can start playing around with the system. For instance, trying to look at probabilities that at most two patients are put into hospitals, due those type of patients here we're looking at. At most two patients are put into a hospital due to air pollution on a given day, on a random day, you could say. So how, how often will it happen? That's another way of putting the same question, right? Now, before we do the calculations, let's uh, present this natural model for this situation, the Poisson distribution. It is used, as I've said, for counts, and compared to the binomial and the hypergeometrical, should, you, should one be sort of confused about this, well, whenever we have the binomial system, it's a system where we know the upper limit, right? When we throw 10 times with a coin, we know the upper limit is 10. If we take a random sample, we know the size of the sample, and the upper limit is the size of the sample. When we, it's a hypergeometrical. In the Poisson situation, you, we could call it, that is reflecting a real life situation where there is no natural limit. I mean, even though on average it's a low number, by definition, there is no upper limit to the number of patients that could drop in on a day. Not by the system itself. It could potentially be any number. I mean, So that's the sort of a technical difference between the situations here. We describe the Poisson distribution by this sort of intensity, which is the average number of events per time or per area, if it's uh, counting in the area. And this is actually also the one, we call that lambda. And if we know lambda, we know lambda, we write up the formula for the Poisson. I mean, whoa, this comes from, from heaven or what, this formula. Where did it jump down, this formula? Well, you can actually prove this formula, at least prove it under certain conditions, under certain definition of what is the system, how is the system actually working, and be mathematically precise about what, how is the system actually working. You can find this proof in the book. This is an example of what I'll jump. I'm not going to spend time proving such formulas. I also have some extra math things, lectures, video lectures from previous classes, if you find the website from the previous classes. The audio is not extremely good on these ones, but I think they are at least workable for most of the ones. I do touch on some of the mathematical proofs and some of these extra math things. It's not part of the syllabus in this course to be able to deal with that. But if you're interested, and some of you, if you are mathematically oriented, I can understand that you are more interested in some of the math than I will generally talk about here. 
So you can jump into it. Or take the probability class 2405, or both. When you see my math, my proofs, my extra math, and you think, this guy is a messy guy, he's not exact enough on me, then go take the math class, and you'll get exactness too here. But if you like exactness, do it. I mean, I used to like exactness. When I was your age, I loved exactness. When I was your age. Um, Here's the formula. If we know lambda, we can find the probability. Look at this. You can apply this formula for any x. We can use it in R, or we can use it from tables in the book. Again, the tables in the book give the accumulated probabilities, that is, the probability uh, distribution function, and then we can subtract subsequent of those if we want to get the individual probabilities. Let's Get back to this one. X is number of patients. What is the probability of X being at most two? Now, X is actually Poisson distributed with a lambda, with the average lambda. We could ask if, we, let's just say it like this, 0.3. Um, should we do the, let's do the table shuffling here, table playing around to the, begin with. There are Poisson tables in the back of the book where you can see as the title of the tables, table two, is the accumulated Poisson probabilities going from zero up to the point in the X in question. We can use these tables if we can find a lambda in the table that matches our situation. Our situation, the lambda was, am I right, 0.3. So yes, in this case, funny enough, we can use the table. What does the table tell us? The table tells us what is the probability of, of serving three or less incidences on a day. That's basically 100%. I mean, then it, then it means this is also one, 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 one. It's clear that these three are closer to one than this one, but with three decimal points, you don't see it. That's it. In practice, they are all there, but they get so close to one at some point in time that with three decimal points, there is no difference, right? We were actually asked to find the probability of being below or less than two. This probability is exactly given to us here, 0.996, right? That was the answer to the exercise question. <coughs> Let us do it in R. Now you can see the system here. In R, there is a function called p points and d points. However you want to pronounce it on your own language, it's up to you. The p points is the probability distribution function for the Poisson. I was going to take that in the number 2 with the lambda of 0.3, right? The number is, luckily enough, what I just found in the table. Also, you could find the, whoa, the D points in 2, for instance. That would be 0.333, and in the table, that would amount to the difference between these two numbers, right? The difference between these two would give us the f of this. Not that we were asked that, that was just to tell you that we could do like this also. Okay? This was, now I think we're going to have one, let me see, I'm not going to go through. Ah, actually that was, I solved it here. Actually I was asked about this, so let's do it just rapidly. I was asked to find this one which would be 
uh, we already find it, found it. It was the 0.333 by using the depoise function. Depoise. Or it could be found by taking the table and subtracting from the less than or equal to 2, we could subtract less than or equal to 1. The difference between the two numbers I showed you. That would be the way to find this one. We're going to do this one, just to make a point. What is the probability that at most one patient, not more than one patient, ah, not one day, three days now. Ah, then let me just change. Let me not uh, call it X, but let me call it Y. And you can say, Y would then be the number of patients in three days, what do you think lambda three day to emphasize this is when lambda one day was 0.3? What is lambda three day, you think? Common sense rule, so there are no trick questions in this one. It's common sense. 0.9. And that is because of basic probability actions, that common sense rules here. So this could be fine similarly to before, but using a lambda of 0.9. I'm not going to do it now. And then we could find the probability. It's just to make this point of you can actually add or multiply up the intensities like that. It makes good sense. That was... The Poisson distribution, so we jump to the next.